Welcome back to another episode. This week, Dad continues to get the bow rollers ready for installation. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. So today, I am sanding the anchor locker. Yeah, Bella's going to show you what it looks like before. She's painting it because there is a bit of mold in there. The paint's peeling up and it's a bit dirty. And it'll be easy to clean if she gives it a fresh coat of paint. We weren't going to do this job. This job was not a priority, but Bella has made it a priority and she has told the captain that she can do it all by herself and that she will start and finish this project. <laughs> Don't know where she's sleeping tonight, but we'll work it out. This was Bella for the next few days. Meanwhile, Dad was outside working on the bow roller. We're all prepped up. Made a couple little plates here because there's a few little fractures around where the load points are here at the bolts. So we're going to weld that plate on here. I don't know if you can see that. But I'll weld that and re-drill that. It's just a little extra strength on there. Don't really want to play with these plates. I would replace them, but I'd have to get them exactly right. And then the only bit we've got to do, we're just trying to figure out how to do this, trying to find a jack or some something where we can bend these in like a like a U shape to go over here like so. That's the missing piece. Otherwise, these are right to be welded up. They've all been Spread out, shortened up. So close. Probably just cut that thread off a little bit and weld this nut on. Push that through and I'm gonna put a pin on that and that'll match this one. Cut that back to size once we've put our loop on. All right, so this morning, Gary and Lee. Hey Gary, this is Hello. Gary. They have been bending. Where did it go? Oh, you're not, <laughs> not showing it yet. <laughs> so they're doing the top of the bow roller. And this is what they've done. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it looks so nice. Oh, it really does. Did that bend easy? Yeah, about We're about to see. to see. Yeah, so he didn't film the first one. He just came and got me because he realized that you guys should see this. So this is the final step before he's going to weld it all together. Are we taking a measurement now or are we going to go off of that first bend like we did last time? Yeah, so that'll just be on there. And... Alright, here we go. This is the bending process. I've got Gary down here at the business end, so if anything goes wrong, I say, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's better than plausible than I <laughs> Yeah. 
probably good once we rebend that other side that was yeah. out. Just... <laughs> um, why is that one? Uh, it is. I think it's just the bend. Okay. Well, they could both be out a little bit. Yeah. It should just be out. Let's see. Oh yeah, this one's out. Yeah. We, we got this around the right way. That might have been the wrong way too. Look at that. That might have been the one that one's a couple of mil different. So. This one is the, that's the thicker one, is it? Yeah. And like you said, if we leave it in, it's going to square itself. Oh, this one's small. No, this is the other side. It was... Boat yard style. Very nice. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Showing us how to weld and bend steel. <laughs> and, and the scavenging skills. I'm, I'm the bender. <laughs> it's a good find. Oh, well, that's it. We've just got to cut these down to height which will be something like that. We'll cut the tails off down there, weld all these together, and uh, weld them back on, and we should have a windlass that pulls evenly now. We don't have to worry about the chain slipping off. Good, good. Good job. So now what else we've got to bend? We can start on dive <laughs> tank racks, we can the bimini, the hard dodger, fix up the davits at the back. So you're not going sailing. <laughs> <laughs> do we go sailing or do we keep doing the boat works? That's the question. Sailing, sailing. <laughs> well, that's it. All in a Sunday morning. And uh, weld this back together and we'll see what she looks like. Good morning, guys. First off, I'm just going to say uh, thanks to Roger. So he sent me this Drill Doctor 350X and I'm bringing back Drill bit's back to life, and it actually works really well. A little bit better than myself when I try and do it on the grinder. They're like brand new again. It's brilliant. Um, so yeah, very grateful. Thanks, Roger. Cheers, mate. Oh, it's definitely going to use. I'm trying to get a few of the old cobalt uh, drill bits back to life, so it's working a treat, because we're drilling through stainless at the moment. So we are taking our time nice and slowly, like you do with stainless. I don't have any cutting fluid, but I'm just putting a dab of oil on it as I go. This is where we're up to. We've bent these two bars up this morning. Gary and I have, uh, well Gary actually spotted the bender in the shed over there and said, I think we can bend those little bars up for you. So this is the piece of steel that I cut in half. I polished it, we took it over, we've bent it up. And now I'm just gonna get some holes marked here because it's a bit easier for me to do this. I've already got the holes here welded. Uh, drilled, so I want to sort of I've marked these out and I'm going to drill these and then I'll put the pin in and we'll weld it with the pin in so there's no misalignment issues there and then I can trim off the excess here. We should have ourselves a beautiful like new bow roller set up. It's pretty tough and I'm going to drill these holes. Uh, Gary's hard at it putting his anti foul on. He wants to get back in the water and I want to use his expertise on um, getting this back together. So that's why I'm sort of working day and night trying to figure this out. And uh, we'll weld that up. We'll give the new welder another try out and let you know how it goes. So far, so good. The Eastwood has, it's been good. We've um, only done little jobs now. I've played with it, but we're starting to use it more. Yeah, it's interesting to see Gary's opinion on it after tonight, because we've got to weld up this, which is it's quite thick, sort of um, stainless. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we've got enough arg on. Let's get this sexy thing back on the front of the boat. Yep. Anyway, back to the story. Um, the guy on the other boat, he's got these ones, the aluminium ones, obviously solid, but within a year, he's worn them right down to nothing. And the actual housing that holds them is alley two, and his wheels have gone like that, trying to correct themselves. So, Similar sort of situation to what we had here, except we were lucky we had a solid roller. Probably not the best for your gal, I suppose, being solid, but it's outlived me anyway. Solid bit of kit. Enough chin wagon, I'll drill these holes out. 
This is another humdinger of a tool. Instead of the old hitting it on the top with the hammer, you can align this up and get it right where you want it and it's just a matter of pushing down. You can adjust the tightness of it, how much spring you want. So handy. It's a ripper. Have to bear with me, darling. I might just have to sharpen one. Just go up and drill size slowly. It's always easier than just drilling a big hole at the beginning. It grabs and breaks your hand. So drilling stainless steel as low as you can go really it just cuts as soon as you go quick it heats up and then you'll be there all day i don't want to break my wrist granddad <laughs> Quite thick stainless, but really easy, like I said, to go through if you just take your time. But as soon as you speed your drill bit up and think you're going to go through quicker, you'll actually be there all day. See this, guys, you can see when you've got a nice sharp drill bit, you can see the, the swarf coming out either side as it drills in. It, um, I just stopped and broke it, but... I just stopped and broke it, but they're just winding out either side. That's when you know you've got a nice sharp drill bit. Okay, so this was originally one pin like so that went through both rollers. Uh, I don't have any stainless pins. I'm going to reuse these, but in a different way. So obviously that's how it sat originally, but we've widened it up so it's out here. So we're missing that piece in the middle. But I don't really want it to run right through. So what I'm going to do, this pin here, if you can see, this was originally a nut and it's been welded on. I'm just going to cut that thread off there and I'm going to weld the top and make it look like that one. And that'll be our other pin. Once we're finished, I won't do it today, but I'll either put a thread on here and another nut or I'll just put a washer and a split pin to um, a cotter pin, whatever you want to call it, to hold that in place. So that'll, that'll be our pins. She's a bit of a tight fit. I wanted to get this pin through first to make sure all four holes align. And so at the time we weld this up, I'll have the pin in there. I just didn't want to have these holes in here and then try and find that hole that's in there and drill it because I can't get the drill in from underneath, obviously. So that's why I've done it this way. And now I'm just going to put a nice line across here and trim that off and that bottom will be welded and finished. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we'll just cut that through there and that'll give us a nice weld there. Don't judge me, but I am going to give you a safety tip, even though I'm not using a guard on this grinder. It's very dangerous and these things account for so many injuries for the DIYers. I've used one of these for over 20 years and it's still no excuse and I don't get complacent when I'm using it either. I understand which way it kicks and throws, but to someone that's not familiar with these, I highly recommend leaving your guard on, because when these kick, the majority of accidents that happen is they kick back into people's faces and necks and kill people. And this is one of the number one causes for the DIY injuries uh, that hospitals see. So I know I'm using one without a guard, but like I say, I shouldn't, but it's the way I like to roll with them. I find it, I can get into places a lot easier, but I do understand the dynamics of how they kick and throw. So if you don't understand how they work, I highly recommend you leave your guard on. Safety tip for the day, even though I'm gonna not use the guard, but. It is a naughty boy. A naughty at least boy. he's got safety glasses on. Good job, honey. But I've had steel in my eyes many a time, so I do use glasses. And I do like to use goggles because I've had steel in my eyes when I've just had safety glasses on. So. We were just about 
about to do it without them. No, I was joking. I was just being lazy. I wanted Sarah to get my glasses. And yes, we know wearing thongs isn't the smartest in the boatyard, but hey, she'll be right, mate. That's it. This is now ready to weld together. All right, Lee's all set up and they're about to start welding. Gary's over there assisting, giving him some of his knowledge and helping out. Thank you so much, Gary. And we'll see how it goes. Moment of truth. It's having a couple of practice goes to start with, I think. So join us next time to see how it goes. Thanks for watching and have a great day.